I, I hate to ask you about every twist and turn of the market, uh, but I do wonder about your thoughts about this morning's price action and whether or not it's a comment about the market's view of gold as a store of value in light of what we think may be changing uh, priorities of the Fed. So I think you know what it highlighted for me is what I've been saying for a long time. You know, mining is a long-term business. It's, um, you know, you see, and, and really it reminds us all that gold price goes down and it goes up and not necessarily in that order. I think, you know, fundamentally this world is, is battling with how to position uh, investments on the back of the unforeseen and unrealized damage of how the pandemic uh, crisis was. Uh, managed and also the impact that it has in the global economy, which really hasn't materialized yet. So, you know, I think without a doubt, you still need, uh, you take this as a buying opportunity and you should still have a 5% or so uh, part of uh, your investment in gold. Right. Where's your, where's your head right now in terms of the ongoing story of, of whether or not crypto is truly stealing mine share away from gold for those who are worried about all kinds of things that might go wrong? So I think, I mean, there's no, there's no comparison in crypto. If you, if you want to really invest in crypto, one of the things gold is, a, is, a, is, is in a, any portfolio is it the stabilizer against uh, volatility. And, uh, and certainly the deltas you've seen in the crypto are enormous. The, the critical thing is you can't just create value and and really what you're buying there is energy uh, if you listen to the crypto guys. So I think what it is telling us is no one believes in, in the fiat currencies anymore and everyone's desperate. There's a lot of money around in the hands of people who didn't lose their jobs and they didn't need to lose their jobs so they've got more to invest. And, and we've seen, I, I saw earlier in the in, in a program about you know the, the Tesla and the EVs. The whole issue here is everyone wants instant gratification. Everyone's really concerned about how do you store your value that you've seen grow. And, uh, and we're gonna see a lot more volatility as we saw in 2009, 10, 11, uh, post the global financial crisis. This time, more so because a lot of the quantitative easing resulted in real money supply, excess money supply into the developed world's economies. The, the emerging and developing world's economies are in dire straits. Yeah. Mark, it's Morgan. As we have this conversation, how does it affect the other commodity that you invest in and you mine, which is copper? Because even as gold production was falling last quarter, we saw copper production for your company Increase. So how does that strategy continue to evolve and take shape, especially as you do see, for example, Wall Street firms cutting China growth forecasts? So, you know, if you believe in, 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 in the importance of looking after our planet and moving away uh, from the, the sort of hydrocarbon energy drive to, to more renewable energies, copper is an absolutely strategic metal. And again, as we do in gold, our focus is the long term You've got to always have cyclicality. The key is, can you, up, uh, you know, un unhook opportunities to, to consolidate and grow that way, or do we have to invest in organic growth? And we're in Barrick are, are committed to doing both, and we are making sure that we are uh, ready to be able to exploit both opportunities. And that goes for copper and gold.